Hi, I'm Daz. I'm the producer of The Drift, uh, and I thought I'd just uh, do a, another sort of diary uh, to give you an update on the editing side. Um, the visual effects are sort of moving um, slowly, but as expected, and as can be expected in terms of um, it's difficult to do visual effects when you haven't got an edit. Um, so while that's sort of going on uh, with the team all over the UK and, and abroad, um, I've been cracking on with the edits um, of the scenes. And although the uh, not all the scenes have actually been completed at, at this stage. Um, we're probably about 90% there. I've only got um, about five or six scenes left to do. Um, but what I have done, as is always the case when I edit, is that you can't help, uh, can't resist temptation. Um, and what I've done is I've sort of put all the um, uh, all the scenes so far sort of in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in its own project file. Um, to sort of watch the movie sort of thing as, as it currently stands. Um, and it's interesting because I've been reading some few bits of uh, bits bobs on the internet about good editing techniques and, and, and indicators as to a good film or a bad film in terms of pace and all that kind of stuff and um, things about how long a movie should be. Um, it's a shame there aren't any about how long diaries should be because sometimes mine go on a little bit long. Um, but, uh, you know, the general rule seems to be nothing more than about 90 minutes um, unless you, it's, it's a real stonker of a movie. Now I'm not saying The Drift isn't going to be one of those but at the same time again being realistic both in terms of how we were in pre-production um, and also in post-production we have to be realistic in how long is an audience going to sit down and watch our films. Bearing in mind our previous stuff, um, our Star Wars spoofs and uh, Doom Raiders and things like that in Beach Patrol were for, for about 45 minutes to an hour and ten and even that was dragging. Now admittedly those stories were, were parodies um, and there was a lot less, a lot less thought went into the, the story of that. It was a lot more simple, and this this film is is, is not simple at all. Um, so that might be fine. However, having said all that, um, the film currently stands with ten percent of the movie to go. Um, it currently stands at an hour and forty five minutes. So that is obviously very very too long. Um, however. Um, it's, it's good in some ways, I suppose. I spoke to some of the guys and said, you know, it's, it's nearly two hours. They're like, oh my god, yeah, how do you want to be filmed? A two hour movie? Yeah, yeah. Um, so it sounds good. Um, and for those who haven't been involved in filmmaking as much as others, it sounds like it's a great thing that you're making a movie that, that, that is that long. And certainly our earlier productions, very early productions, um, the aim was just to make the movie as long as possible, um, just so that we can make and make a movie. Um, that isn't we've learned, you know, that that isn't what it's all about. You know, an advert is 30 seconds or less, even 10 seconds, and, you know, that's got to be outstanding, and you've got to watch it again and again and again. So there's more to it than, and, you know, the you know size does matter. Um, it's smaller, smaller is, is arguably better. Um, so what does that mean? Well, okay, that's what made me think about, you know, the editing process and, and how, um, how I edit, um, what we spoke about before about, you know, creating a project file or, or that kind of thing. And sort of the next phase is how do I edit a scene? Because what you've got here is a breakdown of each, um, you've got the full scene, each scene that is done, is, you know, is, there's about 110 scenes, um, and that's quite typical. Uh, some of them are very, very short, um, some of them are four or five minutes long, depending on what, what's going on. Um, but when you edit a scene, without getting down to, into the technical side of it too much, which I'll do in a minute, you edit the scene as a story, as in a beginning, a middle and an end. It's, the scene itself is a whole story. So you edit in a style, although it's a storyboard edit, so you have to get all the script in, you can't help but edit in a style that makes that scene in itself um, exciting to watch. And if you were making, you know, little minisodes, you know, small episodes, then that works quite well. A good example is if you listen to a radio drama, an ad adaptation of a film into a radio drama, you know, a film that's perhaps two hours long is stretched into six or seven hours. Um, but, if you, and if you listen to that all at once, it's quite tiring and dull. But if you only listen to uh, one episode a week, then it becomes quite exciting. Uh, in fact, even just looking at um, television episodes, serials, you know, um, especially these days with the programs like Lost and, and stuff that uh, it's a continuous story. Um, if you were to watch all those in a go, that might be quite tiring. Now, that's a professional product, but at the same time, the story itself isn't how far is it moving, you know, in each episode. Not much. But it doesn't matter because you only watch it once a week uh, and it's still exciting 
as it as it's um, in its own right as as a, as a program. So when you edit your scene, that's not why you edit that scene. It, it, it's, it's natural to edit your scene into a into a story that's almost self-contained. Um, so that also you know kind of automatically makes it longer than it might need to be. Um, there might be more exposition. There might be more um, visual cues that you. You, you put in that scene in isolation that once you start joining it with other scenes you, you already know something so you, you're seeing the same thing twice so there's an immediate way of being able to remove stuff and shorten the, the, the edit down but the other thing about um, editing at this stage especially as just a sort of storyboard edit is um, to make sure that you're not missing out on certain shots um, and that makes the edit longer as well. You want to make sure you're, you're covering everything. Uh, now, how do you do that? Well, this is sort of the breakdown of, of the scene edit. That what I, what I do is um, just like you break the whole movie down in, into scenes. I almost break each scene down into into lines, as into uh, as in script lines. Um, sometimes it might be a couple or like a, like a, a paragraph, say, of of lines, and then another paragraph of lines, and another paragraph of lines, or or changing points in the, in the scene. So um, there's a scene in the movie where the, it, it's quite a long scene where it's all set in one room, and the characters move from one place in the in the room to another place in the room to another place in the room to another place in the room. So there are sort of natural breaks as to where um, the action is taking place, and that makes it much easier. And you remember before I was talking about how on the log sheet we break the 5,000 clips down into perhaps 100 clips to that scene. You're then breaking that 100 clips down into say 20 clips um, for that area of that scene. So it's like a mini scene within a scene kind of thing. Um, and how far do you go? Well, it kind of sounds like a bit of a silly question, but it's not a silly question. You go right down to the cut, down to the single take, ultimately. Um, and that's how you sort of breaking it down from a massive load of stuff down to just down to the, the few clips you want. So what I kind of do is then is then in in, in a timeline uh, I might have a whole pocket of clips you know one above the other and then of just one area of the scene and then the next one a whole pocket of clips with all the scene stuff and then a, and the same um, and then just and I don't, literally just drag them out of the bin and just put them into a pile of literally just on top of the other no editing just a big pile of you know if you played it you you only see one clip obviously the top one but you'd hear all the other the dark of everything so. Um, I'm not worried about that. You just into those lumps, and then you can visually see different bits. Then you move everything out of the way, and then you just work on one bit. So now I may have ten clips to work with rather than the whole scene. So you work with that, and that's that's like a little story. And then you go to the next one, and so on. And eventually, you come up with this scene, and then you watch the scene as a whole, and then you can immediately see where it's lacking in pace or whatever or continuity. That you might I might just do a, a sort of basic edit, to basically string it together and. Uh, make a scene. Now at the moment we're still keeping things like um, two different shots that I can't decide on, both keep them in, uh, you know, so script lines being repeated and stuff like that. Um, but you get an idea of what the scene looks like. Um, so then you then do that with all the scenes, which is what I've done, uh, almost done rather, uh, at this stage, and that's why we have a movie basically which is an hour and 45 minutes, because immediately as soon as you start watching um, the scenes through, you can see how it can be half the length. So I'll give you an example. The introduction of the movie, without giving anything away, um, the introduction of the story and actually learning what's kicking off uh, on, on, in, in the story, at the moment, doesn't happen until about 50 minutes in. Well, that's just ridiculous. That's just far too long. Um, to, yeah, what, 50 minutes of establishment is just ridiculous. You just, the audience will be like, oh, where, where is this going? Now, there are obviously little action sequences before then, but that's not how you want You really want to be cracking on 20 minutes, 25 minutes, I would say, not being a complete expert, but certainly that kind of if you haven't if the audience doesn't know by that point really what, what what's the point of the of the movie then what was the point of watching it you know um some films are like that and that's fine but this film there is a turning point you know they go out to do one thing and something else happens it's changed everything well if that doesn't happen till halfway through the movie well, what was the well, it's not really what that's not what the movie's about so um but having so looked at initially i thought we connect we're on scene blah and it's an hour in that's ridiculous but then you start watching it and immediately you can just say oh right okay well, we can cut this right down cut this right down but what's really good about um this sort of process is that i'm getting to really know the shots and to really understand the scenes scripts are one thing and i'm and people that know me will know that i'm not the best reader in the world um i don't enjoy reading um even scripts um i just don't like reading i just i like watching um, so editing to the script and watching it for me is much more um, 
enlightening and certainly en enables me to see what is going on in, in the film. Um, that's not to say I didn't read the script, because of course I did, and I understand what's going on in the movie, but it's not until I see it. That's why I like making movies and I don't write books, for example. Um, so, uh, now, by editing it this way, that you basically look at every single cut, as you should, but break it down so your brain doesn't get overwhelmed, so you're just doing a little bit at a time and just slowly moving forward. Um, when I now watch the film, I already my brain can already remember of those perhaps 4,000 clips we've gone through, when I'm just doing that little edit, what other bits there are available. And I can start to think, well, actually, I, I could do the reaction shot there and I could do that. And all my clips are still bunched together. Um, you know, they're still underneath the other ones, even though they've been edited, they're still available for me to look at. Now, ultimately, when we get down to the sort of near the end edits, you know, we'll start removing those clips because when you start putting sound and visual effects in, it becomes very processor intensive on the computer and it's not so easy. So ultimately, we'll get rid of those. But for now, it just means that um, by editing this way, I've got a really good understanding of how uh, the film is coming together, where the shortcomings are, um, and even things like extra lines that we might need, extra dubbing we might need to do, cutaways we could use that make things more uh, clear. Um, a scene might be too long. Can we can we chop up the scene and mix it in with another scene? Um, you know, because. Things happen in the movie where people are in different places, so you can you arguably can cut between the two different locations and things like that. So, and we try to do that in the script, but I'm looking at it now thinking well, actually we might be able to do a little bit more. Um, that might get, that could make it more dynamic, um, and, and looking at the pace of the movie generally and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, it, it makes me very pleased um, to to do that and to be in that position because certainly doing pre-production and, and filming, you know, it's just a, a, a mad um, process. It just very intensive, that, and you are creative. You get you know, that battle that we did during the filming to get all those creative shots. But now we've got that time, and we have the luxury. And I think it's only right that we should, as much as it took us six months to build, and then it took you know months to write and to prepare before we'd be built and everything else. I think it's we absolutely should be doing it this way, and we should invest the time uh, in the edit and in sound and visual effects, and not just. You know, it's very easy with computers to just slap something together, add a soundtrack, put on a title and push it out. Um, that doesn't make you a filmmaker. You, know, you need to still, just because it's easy to cut something together doesn't mean it should be done quickly. It means it should be done properly and you should, if anything, with that extra capability, you should use that to make your edit as creative as possible and even experiment and, and, and try things out because Unlike when I used to start editing back in the in the in the early '90s with tapes, you know, you had very little flexibility uh, at a domestic level. Well, we don't now. We have lots of flexibility, so we should use that not just to create bigger, more spectacular films, but certainly also in terms of more spectacular edits and styles. So, so yeah, it's been good. Uh, I just thought I'd sort of bring you up to date on that. Um, got a big visual effects weekend coming up this weekend. Um, see how that goes, and no doubt there'll be some diaries of that as well. So, uh, so there we are. Thank you.